should uh, do it. I don't know. Do a roll call or I pledge really? allegiance? No, I don't know. Okay. Clifford Buffo? Yeah. John Horn? Yeah. Joanne Kalb? Here. Art Christie? Yes. Alan Shiner? Here. Sam Scotta? Vivian Welton? Here. Okay. Do you want to come up and present um, what you got here? This, this mic. All right, that's much easier. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Roy Dignes. I uh, live up in High Mount, uh, right across from uh, the entrance to Bel Air. I've been there for 20, had that house for 25 years, and uh, I've been up here permanently for six years. My, my parents had built a house on Rose Mountain in 1957, so I've been coming up here since I was born. project we're proposing, uh, you know, there's a, a real need for additional rooms within the town and for housing in general. Uh, there are not too many large parcels suitable, suitable for development in or near, in or near the Hamilton Shandaken. Uh, the Shandaken Comprehensive Plan and the Watershed Agreement encourages such development, especially where public services such as, as water and sewer could be available. The 18-acre uh, parcel we're talking about is directly across from Friendship Manor Road and the entrance to the Pine Hill Lake. Its location provides for the opportunity for non-vehicular access, you know, bicycle and walking to the Pine Hill Lake, hiking trails, the proposed rail trail and the main street of Pine Hill Village. And of course, its uh, proximity to Bel Air is key. While the site itself lends to a variety of development alternatives, the Andaken zoning leaves few multi-unit alternatives other than the special permit process that allows for a hotel, motel, or lodge development, or a vacation resort, day camp, camp, cottage, or cabin development. A hotel or motel would certainly be an option, but I think these last two years have dramatically changed how people View lodging alternatives with, with less emphasis on communal areas and a desire for separate and more private accommodation. You know, more so people want physical space from others. Uh, we think we've come up with a pretty good plan, which for now we'll call a cabin development uh, that's more in harmony with the area, has a low impact, and we've made a real effort to minimize the disturbances. Our objective here tonight is to present it to the board, have an interactive discussion on the project's layout and scope, and while we will pursuing while, while we will be pursuing approval of the overall project, it is presently contemplated that it will be built in phases. And with that, I want to introduce a few people that are here with us. This is Ed Wood and his uh, partner Sarah. They're going to go over the. Uh, the, the design of the uh, the layout and the design, and then naturally, you know, Alan and Michael will address a lot of the other issues. Go ahead. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You can prop it on here if you need to. Yeah. Yeah, it helps okay. with the mat. And you can take it off. Oh, okay. Testing. The gentleman with the camera used to see that also. Okay. Can, you want to come behind me, Tom? I can move. Oh, I think that would work. Yeah. Okay. It's it's yeah, it's the same as your handouts. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for taking the time to have a look. Uh, thanks, Roy. Um, uh, I'm Ed Wood, uh, and my partner, Sarah LaPergolo, uh, from LXW Architects. Um, we're a small design uh, firm uh, out of Halkettsville, New York. Um, 
Sarah and I have been living uh, in Halkettsville for close to 25 years uh, and have developed our design practice, uh, LXW, uh, realizing the need for well-designed, modest uh, size uh, residential dwellings um, that are kind of responsibly built, quality designed, um, locally sourced materials, uh, respect the landscape and sit in harmony with, uh, with nature. So that's, that's kind of our, our mission uh, that we try to follow with all our projects. Um, in addition to that, we're, we're both on the board of directors at the Water Discovery Center for the CWC, uh, and we're working on a 30-acre uh, nature trail um, in Arkville, um, which uh, is a big blending the architecture of the, the residential uh, houses along with the nature trails is a nice kind of combination and a, an appropriate application that we're, we're looking at for uh, the Rose Mountain project. So I'll, I'll walk you quickly through the sheets that we have here and also are the same as your handouts. <coughs> um, for those uh, familiar or unfamiliar, um, I'll just walk through it quickly. Uh, it's a uh, beautiful site um, on the north side of the uh, New York State Route 28 uh, Valley. Um, slopes upward from 28. Uh, it has the benefit of being south facing. It has nice tall, uh, mature tree growth, um, well spaced and clean kind of undergrowth. It's, it's actually quite uh, beautiful. Uh, south facing, slopes down, and uh, affords beautiful views of the, of the valley. So taking our clues from walking the site and the, and the site pictures we have here on sheet number one, um, you know, the, the roadway comes up from 28, there's, uh, there's a, a kind of a gentle loop, finds its way into a beautiful clearing, and then kind of feathers out into uh, pathways, existing pathways throughout the site. Uh, and there is a, a, right, a, a right away uh, electrical clearing that kind of bisects the site uh, east to west. So those are the givens of, uh, of the site. Um, I have some aerial photos on here as well, uh, but quite, uh, quite beautiful and, and natural in its, in its kind of virgin state. Um, nice out, outcropping, stone walls, all those things that we want to respect. <clears throat> but I don't know if I missed anything on there, but I have a kind of general overview. Um, what we're, what we're uh, focusing on is uh, phase 1A, which we're calling, which is the first um, cluster of, of cabins. Um, units are we're calling cabins. Uh, and we try to use the, we kind of use the existing road sweep that exists, which seems natural with the land contours, use that shape to inform the, the configuration of the cabin layouts. It kind of creates these ellipses that organizes the, the units kind of naturally in the, in the setting. Um, we placed for this phase 1A cabins uphill from the road. Um, so, you know, the, the thinking is, is gravity fed to, to the road for utilities, which Alan will speak to later on, but that, that kind of informed our, our initial placement of the 20 cabins on the site. <clears throat> All of our, um, the cabin designs are, uh, will take into account the direction of uh, facing the sun, facing the views, and facing downhill. Uh, so that is what gives us our, kind of informs the architecture. We have two types of cabins, which you'll sh see on the sheet, uh, two basic styles, which, um, 
we, we, we borrowed from uh, the kind of historic architecture of Delaware County of barns and sheds. Very simple but beautiful forms uh, that work well in the landscape. Uh, so we have a, a cabin A, which we're calling the tip, which is a single tip roof um, of steel, wood, you kind of natural materials, low maintenance, um, and you know, good overhangs to protect from the sun and the weather. Uh, and then we have a, a sequence for, for construction that would minimize um, soil disturbance. So these, these cabins sit like on tiptoes uh, above the earth um, is the idea. And to leave as small a footprint on the natural landscape as possible. So typically we have six piers that touch the ground, uh, footings, uh, and a utility shaft, precast utility shaft, which gathers uh, all the utilities that were entering and leaving each, each cabin. Uh, so that's, that's our phase 1A, which has the, the roadway. We have uh, wood chipped uh, paths that connect the cabins with generous spacing around each cabin and suggesting kind of a community gathering areas for these clusters. Uh, that could be a picnic table, it could be a fire pit, it's a, but it's, a, it's an effort to create kind of a community amongst uh, the visitors um, along with parking, which again, Alan will talk to more specifically. So this is phase, this is uh, phase 1B. Uh, these are all pieces of the puzzle. The initial focus is, is 1A, but it's always good to look at the whole jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> um, so the, these are, this is phase 1A, uh, sorry, 1B, and then, yeah, yeah, great. Here's our phase, phase two, which continues to extend uh, using the, the more gentle sloped areas of the site uh, and let that inform the configuration and clusters of cabins. And then the third phase uh, uses the, the natural clearing and uh, an array of cabins uh, up, up the gentle hillside and depicted on the same page and in your handout are some of the variations of the same theme of the, of the single cabin. So um, we, we explored and studied uh, using the same construction methodology, various combinations of this same module uh, that could be arranged um, as a, what we call a dumbbell. So there's a bedroom on either end or they could be a T, or they could be an L. Um, it's kind of a, uh, it's an uh, interesting study of kind of using the same module, but configuring it in different ways that respond to the site uh, and use. Um, so that they would each, as planned today, would have a, uh, a bathroom, a kitchenette, uh, and a, uh, living bedroom area. Uh, now you, yep. you show a picture of this central uh, here, I forget what you call it, but that would be all utilities, electric, yes. water, sewer. Yeah, everything in, everything out. Uh, maintenance and staff. Uh, I would defer to Roy on staff. Yeah, we're probably planning on having you know one one person in charge of maintenance. Okay. And then and, and no 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 staff. There'll be nobody other than just maintaining. There'll be nobody on site. This is it. No, nobody living on site. No. So if there's a problem in the middle of the night, who would they reach out to? Probably somebody in your buyer. Maybe one. Maybe the person doing the maintenance will be living in one of these. Or, you know, we're trying to make it as uh, maintenance-free as possible. Right. 
and that's it's escaped. It's needless entry, you know, everything these days is done online and yeah. basically touchless. And when the, uh, the overhangs, et cetera, you know, would minimize shoveling, et cetera. Um, so we're trying to make them, you know, it is, it is, they are cabins and it is considered a camp. So there is a rustic quality to it that uh, it's, it's not intended to be a five-star hotel that they're, um, but so they're, um, you know, I, th I think that the fact that you're, you're, you're not pulling your car up right to your mm -hmm. cabin, that there's a bit of a hike and you're experiencing nature is a, is a plus. Um, These are year round? Yes. Um, I could walk you through the construction diagram, which is on the bottom right hand page of the last uh, corner of the last page. Um, so this is, this is kind of dissecting the uh, cabin A. So it's uh, six footings, so six holes, sauna tube, uh, pour concrete, set the precast shaft, um, which carries the utility. So that's, that's, those are the elements that touch the ground. Um, then we would, then we have bolted together pre, uh, prefabricated steel that bolts to the footings and connects horizontally to uh, the beams, six, six steel columns. On that construction sits a uh, pressure treated wood platform that serves as the deck and also serves as the floor of the cabin. Um, so we're slowly taking form. Then the roof, uh, probably corrugated metal, um, goes on and that's, that protects, uh, that carries the snow loads um, uh, for the cabin box below. Uh, and then we're proposing a, a SIP panel construction, which is a structurally insulated panels that are four foot by 10 foot, um, can be carried by four, four men or a, a lull or a bobcat skid. Um, very, it can be brought in on a small truck rather than a 53 foot tractor trailer and quickly assembled with uh, some clamps and a screw gun. Um, super insulated, uh, super quiet, uh, would exceed en energy code um, uh, standards um, and quick build. The last, the last uh, step is the rain screen cladding, the roof, which doesn't have to uh, carry all the snow loads because of the, uh, the floating roof above it, uh, and, and windows. So that's kind of the basic construction of the modular system that we've come up with for these cabins. Um, and they I have a question. Yeah, sure. How wide is this road going through around these cabins? 28, 20 feet. It has to be a minimum of 20. Right. Minimum. Because you have to be able to get emergency vehicles in here. Yes. And the people, what they, they're going to park by their cabin? Yes. So you, don't, you won't have a parking area. Uh, we, we've we've uh, earmarked two areas for parking. Um, go back to uh, page two. For phase 1A, there's two, two parking zones. I, uh, one lower parking, one upper parking. And then that connects to the, uh, the walking paths. So you don't park at your cabin? Correct. Yes. You, you hike in, hike up. I mean, in total here, with all your phases, you're going to have 56 cabins. Yes. What's the build out time on this uh, project? The build out time for all phases? Mm -hmm. um, We may, we may may decide to do it all at once, you know, if, uh, if uh, you guys look favorably upon it. 
because naturally the the reason for the 1A is 1A we're able to do and, and, and stay under the 1A for disturbance. Uh, you know, when we get into the others, naturally we're going to need to do a, a, a switch and it starts to get a little, a little more extensive. So you have you have to decide if you're applying for just 1A or all of oh, it. Oh, no, we okay. can't like approve for it. Yeah. Right. Right. We can We could work on this and just on this, and you can come back for the rest another time. Let me, um, I, I can answer that too. I agree with you 100%. We have to, under Seeker, we have to examine all the impacts from the 56 units. That that is absolutely correct. We've got. We have to look at everything. Under I have a question. Have you done anything like this before? Uh, we're we're. Uh, we're do we have one under similar under construction right now in Halkettsville, um, and there are there are uh, a few precedents similar to this. Uh, one is an outward bound cab in Colorado, which is beautiful. Uh, um, uh, so there are, uh, we have we have one that's under construction right now and. Three or four more plans. These are single family. They're not a, a, a cabin. Uh, I'm saying the entire project. Have you done anything to this scope? No, not not exactly like this. But we are working on the nature trails and the and the um, the single family homes. What's the total area of disturbance with full build out? Mm -hmm. It's not. It, you wrote something on the application. It looks like L one. Yeah, we have less than one. Yeah, we have, we have calculated the entire phase 1A through 3. Phase 1A alone is about 0.9 acres. With road and piers and utility shafts and parking. And retaining walls and grading. All right, this is like, again, there's, there's two facilities similar to Now maybe I missed it. Huh? If somebody wants one of these cabins, is there an office? Do they check in or do they check out? Or they everything like that is done uh, electronically these days. Keyless. Keyless. Through one. Uh, I'm Sarah. I'm the code enforcement officer. And Hi, so, um, also other things. But my questions right now, from that standpoint. Um, is it a short-term rental? Is it what's the transient like? What is it? By the day, by the week, by the month. Maybe maybe some of them will be seasonal for like the ski season. Uh, so it's not long term stay, or it it, it can be long term stay. It, it could be. I'm sorry, Alan. One more quick one quickly. I know it's two zones, the 1.5 and the three. Where in the phase? Where is the zoning change? It, it changes on the, the power line. Okay, so everything's in the beginning. Every phase, every, everything, all phases all stay in the 1.5. Okay. So, and it's. Go ahead, Alan. Okay. So I was going to cover this when we got to the next part, but. Okay. It's going to be a DOH regulated temporary residence, which covers hotel and hotel, but probably defined by motor cars and cabin development. Uh, so well, hold on one second. I want Cliff and the rest of them to hear this. Sorry. No, Alan's explaining this DOH could you, thing. Alan, could you speak a little yes, louder? Yeah, sorry. sorry, I know I, you want to hear it. I was going to cover this when I get up to the next set of plants. I'm sorry, I forgot I didn't have the microphone. <laughs> it's going to be a DOH regulated facility. Um, it's going to be considered a temporary residence, which is part 7-1 of the New York State Sanitary Code. 
So the Ulster County Health Department will be responsible for issuing the annual operating permit. They'll also be responsible for reviewing and approving the plant. Um, it will get regularly inspected. And as Roy said, it could be someone rents for one night, someone rents for one weekend, someone rents for one week, someone rents for one season, just like they would at another, you know, hotel or cabin. Through one, like through Rose Mountain Holdings, or will they be on other short-term sites? Will you have it on things like VRBO or S Airbnb? I, I, because I, then to tell you the truth, I haven't gotten, gotten, gotten that far yet. Okay. Yeah. Kevin, do we have an STR law? We will this spring. Yeah, it's been okay. sent out could to you, the lawyer for trial. Could you just take me through the process? I'm getting a little confused. Sorry. I just... Someone calls you up, tells you they want to rent a unit, gives you the credit card number, you give them the touch combination, yep. and they go up and go in, and that's it. I don't even talk about that. It's all online. That's they, virtually all, you know. I can, but you don't have any maintenance man there at all on the property. We may, you know, we may have somebody that actually stays there, or or, or very nearby. So, my, am I correct? Please, Kevin, jump in if this is wrong. But we're um, for short-term rentals, we're going to require some sort of. Like property manager type person in the event of a plumbing issue sure. uh, or something, something so they're not. I mean, they need. Who do these people call when um, you know if something goes wrong at two a.m. Oh, that's certainly somebody to call. What's that? That's certainly be somebody to call. Okay. Yes, that was part of the recommendation. Yes. Okay. And you know, also Roy lives within five minutes of the site. So. Are they gonna call you, or if you're gonna call hey, Alan. <laughs> We're going to give you a number, Alan. He's fixed things at my house. <laughs> so they're not individually owned? No, it's they like, can't sort of, it's because going, uh, there's nothing in the zoning uh, laws that would allow that no, at, this, at this point. Well, I, I agree. I just want to say that. It'd be nice, but no. no it's, it's got to fall, fall under of, one of those categories. Is there going to be a list of covenants and rules and regulations and... No music after 11 o'clock at night. I mean, it's, it, it, we're not hearing too much here. Certainly those can be, you know, rules that are imposed by the board, and et cetera. You know, our, our, our main focus here today is, to, is just to get your feeling on, uh, on the concept and the, and the layout and the, you know, all the, all, all the details will certainly be worked out during the, uh, during the approval process for sure. So if they're all short-term rentals, you're going to have to have 20 or 30 cleaning ladies coming in and uh, cleaning up. And, uh, so, well, that's your problem. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, like laundry services and stuff is off-site? Well, that's good. It's going to be like It's not. Well. You know when there's a changeover, you got to change over. But there's laundry service off-site? Uh, possibly. Okay. What do you figure in on that, Alan? With, we what did the EOH say it. for laundry service? Yeah, they got something not, that we would not be doing an on site laundry operation. So basically, they would have to be contracted with like a laundry service. So basically, gotcha. you, would have, you would have maintenance staff, I shouldn't say maintenance staff, housekeeping staff come in, and someone checks out, they would clean the unit, take out the linens, put in the linens, linens would then get picked up by a laundry service and then return to the A little service. louder, please. A little difficult with the mask. It would function like most temporary residences of this type, where you would, it, it, they would have a housekeeping team would basically clean when people check out the units. They would obviously take the linens. Those would then obviously go off site. They would obviously have clean stockpile linens to basically you know, restock the units with clean linens to kind of answer the, the laundry question. So we're not proposing to have a unit dedicated to a laundry facility, if that's, if that's the question. As far as maintenance is concerned, you know, we did, I'll get to it when Ed's done with his piece, unless are you basically done? I can jump in in a second um, on the rest of it. We did include some parking for basically, you know, people to come in and clean, you know, things like that. Plus also people would be coming in to clean after people have checked out as well. So there's going to be a storage building somewhere here for sheet. People aren't going to take the sheets off the bed, go home and do the laundry and bring them back and put them on that day. 
So there's got to be some facility to have your extra material somewhere. There yeah. could be part of some units dedicated to basically storage for cleaning materials and things like that. But the thought was basically that a cleaning service comes in, cleans the unit, changes the linens, new people check in. Unless they're staying for the entire <laughs> school season. You also have to have a dedicated place for garbage. Correct. Because you have people garbage cooking. Right. And we, yeah. have, we have not laid out we have not laid out utilities on the site yet because at this point in time we kind of just want to cover the general layout. At, you know, soon we will be laying out water lines, sewer lines, mm -hmm. a bit more detail as far as other infrastructure, which would also include a dumpster area, mm -hmm. you know, garbage receptacles, things like that. So that would be kind of the next phase. At this point it was more or less just unit layout, road layout, parking layout, highway access. Um, so if you'd like, I can kind of jump into my do you have density in there? Yeah, density. Do you have density in there? That's yes, I can cover all that. And lighting. Um, lighting, once again, we have not gotten to that point yet as far as the as far as the layout. Right now it's really just kind of conceptual as far as layout and density as Cliff was mentioning. Okay. So let me try to make this so you can see it and you can see it. So I can see my notes. Okay, so Ed covered the general layout from an architectural design standpoint. What I was trying to do is more or less just cover more or less the general layout from an infrastructure perspective. Um, although we haven't got heavy duty design, we did want to make sure that the layout for phase 1A did work. Uh, you'll see we did a preliminary uh, zoning compliance table. We did a preliminary parking table. Um, and for the first phase, you know, we did cover, um, and this is just, this plan is just for phase 1A. Um, as was asked before, the R5 zoning district, we're not building anything that's, that's all pretty much uh, stays the same. For the lower section with the R1.5 area, we showed all the setbacks. Um, we showed the um, structure height, lot widths, front setbacks, rear setbacks. As far as um, parking's concerned, I'll cover that in a, in a, in a minute. Um, generally, you enter Route 28, as Ed was mentioning. We do show road grading coming up. There will be either probably a combination of uh, stone boulder retaining wall, landscape block retaining wall, gabion wall, some combination there because there is some regrading we can do on the road coming in. Um, for 1A, we're really just focusing for the most part on the units above the road and these few that are below the road because these are going to be the easiest to serve with utilities. Um, we kept the road sloped under 12%. We have not surveyed the site yet. This is based upon LIDAR topography taken off the New York State GIS website. So as we move forward, we'll actually do an aerial on the survey, and we'll actually obviously tweak the, uh, the layout and do the actual, you know, we'll, we'll reapproach the grading, reapproach the topography, and basically come up with a uh, more refined design. This is once again preliminary based upon information available. Um, yeah, as I'm sure you can appreciate going and making the next step to doing full topography the site is a substantial financial investment, so we want to kind of just get a conceptual layout going first. Um, I kind of mentioned before that, to answer Sarah's question, that it is a health department regulated facility that it will be a part 7-1 temporary residence. We do not propose to have anything else other than the temporary residence. We're not doing food service. We're not doing a pool. We're not doing a hot tub. It's basically units. Each unit's gonna have its own kitchenette. Um, as I mentioned, there may be a small community area with a pavilion and some picnic tables and possibly, you know, some sort of, you know, fire pit or something like that in the future. Um, as far as um, water supply is concerned, um, I brought with me the water supply permit from New York State DEC that was issued in 2002. Um, that basically explains that the former villi incorporated village limits is the water district. Um, I also brought copies of the uh, USGS of the area showing the old incorporated village limits. So it does have access to 
um, the water district. However, the water line is on the other side of 28, so we would be proposing to tap into that through direct and then directional drill across 28. We realize there will be insufficient pressure to serve these units, so Roy is proposing basically install a, a booster station to basically bump, you know, do the pressure. This is not something we would expect the, uh, the town to do. So we would basically utilize the available water. We would take care of the infrastructure on the site right, and, and obviously uh, build, a, build a booster station. Um, that comes from the Pine Hill Water District, uh, Part 5-1, Health Department Regulated <coughs> Water Supply. Um, the Health Department would be responsible when they review the temporary residence for not just reviewing the TR aspect of it, but obviously the water supply improvement. So that would basically get referred to them, as well as the other town would be having oversight on that too. Um, the <coughs> wastewater, um, the DEP sewer main, um, as you know, the DEP plant is right down the street, so the DEP sewer plant entrance is about 1,500 feet away from the entrance to this property, uh, just shy of 1,500 feet. The DEP sewer main runs right in front of the property on the westbound side of 28. We have met with the DEP representative that would be the one whose group would be reviewing the connection, so they would have to review the connection. Um, our reading of the town code is that given the fact they are within 100 feet of the sewer main, they're actually right, the sewer main is right in front of the property, um, they would be connecting to the, 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 the public sewer, which is then tributary to the Pine Hill wastewater plant. Obviously, it's the Pine Hill you know, sewer service area. Um, it would all be gravity fed, sewer lines and water mains, once again, have not been designed yet, but would get laid out within the road, which is obviously all going downhill as far as gravity sewer is concerned. We're not proposing any wastewater pumping stations. It's just going to be a gravity main with a series of manholes, six to eight inch sewers basically coming up the roadway. Water mains lay 10, 10 feet away from those. Um, once again, at this point, it would be our anticipation that health department would be responsible for review of that because once again, it's part of the permitted health department facility. Um, now, are you going to get some demand that you have an entrance and an exit? You only have one way in, and, and it a would third? be basically one way in with a series of hammerheads. You know, with a ham, with basically on phase one A, it ends in a hammerhead. No, I mean on Route 28, there's only that little. Uh, there's only that one little, one little point. But what point. if somebody demands? What if the state demands that you have a entrance and an exit? Well, I'm glad you asked that because that was the next thing in my notes. Okay, good. Is that we, in addition to talking to the DOH about the project, meeting with the DEC out, of, not DEC, the DEP at the site, we um, have also met with the DOT on the site. So we met with the permit engineer from DOT at the site. Um, we would need to do a New York State DOT Perm 33 COM permit, which basically it would be the, for the commercial entrance, and there is an existing DOT stormwater system out there. So given the fact we have an entrance and we have the catch basins, what have you, from DOT, we would have to apply for that permit. Two good things about that is uh, the engine that was out there does not see any issues with this existing driveway, because it is an existing driveway going to the property. It's an old series of woods roads to what was probably an old farm. Um, Basically, they don't see an issue with issuing the permit. We have not applied for it yet. That would come after we start moving forward with the planning board. But I did want to mention the siding distances on Route 28. We look both directions with the DOT. It's a really nice, long, straight section of 28. There's no turns. There's no blind summits. Um, visibility is, is, you know, is, is very good. And unlike, what should I say, a facility with a restaurant or some other, you know, except accessory uses like that. Um, this is basically people coming in, checking in, spending the night, going out in the morning, going to the lake, going skiing, what have you. Um, so we, you know, the traffic would be you know, fairly, fairly minimal. We're anticipating one vehicle per unit. And we kind of laid, laid it out from that perspective. Um, so to answer your question as far as access, DOT has been out there. DOT in general, my experience with them on several projects throughout Ulster County has been they like to limit it to basically one entrance per property. Oh. 
So I, I had to come up recently on a, on a uh, commercial project in the town of Ulster, um, where you know, the client was looking at purchasing another property, and um, that's they're not fond of having multiple entrances. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm not saying there are cases where they would have it, um, but for something like a restaurant, a bakery, a hotel, a motel, their preference so far, what I've seen, has been one entrance slash exit. Um, Okay, the other thing I then just, those are kind of my notes. Uh, going through it kind of quickly, I mentioned the zoning compliance table. Obviously, we point out where the location is. I talked a little bit about the road grading. For now, we've, been, we've, we've shown 22 spaces for phase um, 1A. As you'll see, there's six units here, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we basically assumed 22 spots to allow basically two spots for parking for maintenance people coming in and going out. So whether it be housekeeping or as someone mentioned before, if there was a plumbing issue, someone needs to come in to fix something, we made sure at least for the first days we have two spots. We would do more as the, the project grows. Um, we also would be providing uh, ADA accessible parking as required and obviously a certain number of the units uh, would be um, ADA compliant. Obviously, units closest to the parking would be ADA units. So there would be one or two ADA units, they'd be ones close to the parking. On page two, um, I'm sorry, I just put in some standard typical details. I'm not saying this is a final list. Some of these things may be modified, added to, completed to. Um, we included some basic planting details. A split rail fence detail, just more or less for aesthetics. Um, if you recall seeing on Ed's layout, it showed additional phases where you would walk, you would park and then walk towards your units. We put in a gate detail because we don't want a situation where the parking ends and then someone decides to start driving down a footpath. So we would basically use those gates. Obviously, they would have a lock on them. If there's an emergency issue, such as the fires like that, fire would probably basically, you know, cut. Done, done some of the they would basically you know, cut the lock and bolt cutters and continue on down their way. Um, timber guide rail detail for along the roadway, handicapped parking details, an assortment of various types of paths, uh, wood chip path, accessible path, gravel road resurfacing, and gravel road and parking surfacing. I said gravel road resurfacing because there is some there is an existing road going through the project. So much we're going to build on, so much we're going to basically leave alone. I also call out some basic trenching details and a sewer manhole detail. Uh, once again, water and sewer is not designed yet, but just kind of give you a feel for some of the details that would be appearing on the set of plans. And on the third page. Now, maybe I missed it. What is on this property now? It's vacant. It has a series of old logging farm roads. Hey. There's no old house. Uh, there's some old foundation buildings. Okay. But other than that, there's there's no structures. There was obviously a structure at one point in time when you first come in and wind up the hill back here, there is an old foundation. Um, I have not researched it to the point where I can tell you what that old foundation was for. I assume it was probably for a farmhouse or a cabin or something like that. But that's the only structure. That's what you see anything else in the house. What's the frontage on this Alan? Um, I did not did not bring a scale with me. It's probably about 80 feet, 80 to 100 feet. On the third page of the plan, um, I covered just some basic details for when we move beyond phase one and need to do stormwater. I put in some some typical stormwater details. This is obviously not a SWIP at this point in time. The goal would be basically build phase one with a commitment that if we go beyond phase one, we would obviously do a SWIP for phase one plus the rest of the phases that we're building. Um, as I mentioned before, different options as far as retaining walls. And um, having not done the park in the site yet, having not done you know, a full analysis of what's going to be required for walls. We have not narrowed down what type of retained walls we'll be doing. Um, and basically some basic construction details as far as self-fence and items like that. 
Uh, that's kind of the basic layout at this point in time. Yes, Art. I have a question. Does the stormwater termination come down to Route 28? The stormwater route can come down towards 28 because it's all gravity basically going downhill. Right. So now we would have to, you know, obviously once we go into future phases, our post-development runoff would have to be less than or equal to the pre-development runoff. So we have kind of reserved some areas for stormwater for the future. Um, at this point, we are not proposing pavement. We're proposing gravel, gravel roads, gravel parking. Uh, to answer the question you raised earlier, um, as far as the road width, we've made sure also between the edge of the road and the parking, there's enough for the um, clear, aisle behind, clear aisle behind it. So basically, between the parking spot and the road width and a few extra feet, you get that full, I think it would be the 20 foot for the spot plus the 24 or 26 foot for the clear aisle. Obviously, the roadway becomes part of the clear aisle. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. generally what I want to, what else did you have, Art? I'm sorry. Nothing. I was just thinking out loud. Is that sure your, your road details are going to be under a subdivision. That, that's where you can find all your road details Correct. for your, your clearances and your maintenance of utilities and whatever. Is that? It's under subdivisions for your Correct. road details. Just saying. Right. And, and the reason we had Hammerhead instead of like a cool sac is a lot of the towns I've dealt with prefer the Hammerhead over the cool sac. The other thing is a cool sac also takes a very large amount of space disturbance and on a site like this tends to get quite unsightly because it's almost you know like a big disc coming out of the side of the hill. Are these hammerheads drawn to scale? Yes. How long is the road? Um, for phase 1A, if you look up here, it's basically just shy of a thousand, it's right around a thousand feet. Okay. It, was, it was going to be a private driveway owned and operated by the owner. Obviously, you know, uh, maintained by the owner. The water and sewer mains will be in the, in the, in the road, only maintained by the owner, and you know, obviously plowed by the owner, what have you. Now, I'm looking at phase three. It looks like phase four could just keep creeping up the hill, or is the power line an absolute barrier? The issue once you start getting to the above the power line is it starts getting quite steep. You know, it's like typical Catskills town, Shane and Dave, it's just that there's a point at which, could you do something out there? Yes. Would you, is your you know, financial return worth, you know, worth what you're putting into it? And probably not. And also the accessibility becomes a real issue as far as slopes. But I mean, can you just put a road under the power lines? You, you could, it's but it's not it, a barrier. It, 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 there's the issue of the practicability in that trying to keep the road, say, less than 12%, it would be very difficult without basically doing switchbacks continuing up the hill. You know, there is some existing, there is an existing old farm, you know, farm road, um, but it's not necessarily something when you start getting above the power line that you would want to not want to take a private vehicle over. So I have, I have a question. The way it's laid out on this map, I'm trying to imagine what a guest would do driving in, and I would want to drive up to the little cabin that I'm going to stay in and unload my things. I wouldn't want to have to drag bags all the way around the walking path, especially in the winter. Um, is there a provision for people to pull off at the side of the road by the cabin? No, there was not. I mean, basically, the goal is, as Ed had mentioned, as with Roy's goal, to try to kind of keep the layout if you call it, you're not you're, you're not looking over your your car route or your neighbor's car route. Basically, it's well. I understand that they weren't going to leave the car there, um, but just to unload, is there enough space on the roadway for people to pull up on the side of the road and traffic in both directions to come past? There would there would be if there was not you know much traffic at that point in time of the day. You know we we laid it out to basically show a 20 foot wide road, 10 foot lane each direction, but we did not provide pull offs beyond. I'm just trying to foresee no, that people will will do it whether it's planned for or not. I, I understand. And I don't really think that one parking space per cabin is realistic. 
because you may have one family staying in the cabin, but they may have people that are coming to the cabin to pick, you know, to, to plan a day, sick activity. You know, there are people going to have other cars coming and going. Well, for the first phase, if you look at the size of the units, these are all basically going to be one bedroom units. So our thought was basically one bedroom, one car. Well, as you get into future phases, we have looked at, you know, if it's a double unit, as Ed showed, or a triple unit, as Ed showed, then we're going to obviously, you know, consider it as a two-bedroom unit. We would probably allow for two cars. A three-bedroom unit would probably allow for three cars. Because it's not to say that you couldn't have a situation where, you know, two couples go and are basically meeting different locations and bring two yeah. cars or something like that. Phase one, though, those mm -hmm. are all one-bedroom units. I see. Which is why we did one car per unit, which I believe would be compliant with town zoning. Are you going to have overflow parking somewhere? We, we're not planning on overflow parking. Once I'm, we're, we're I'm just looking at the contours here, and it's not like, like if you get, like Vivian said, if you get one extra car, they're either in the hammerhead or on a steep drop off. I mean, you're going to have to have retaining walls. And well, correct. Gotta, we're, show, we're, we're, you know, we're showing through the, you'll see these squares that are around the edge of the roads like that. Those are retaining, those, you know, that is the retaining wall. I'm so saying with the, ha the hammerhead. Um, I, mean, I don't know, you know, I haven't been out to the site, obviously. Just a lot of elevation came yeah, we, right in that area. And like I said, it, it actually looks worse on paper than it does in reality, which is one of the reasons we want to get out there and do a full a full photograph survey to get a better feel for it. But we want to present the project to town first to kind of basically see what your thoughts were on it. Um, it's not to say we can't do some overflow parking, but to comply with the zoning, we're assuming one bedroom one spot plus two additional spots for um, housekeeping or maintenance. As we get into further future phases, there will be more parking. You know, and we could you know, we could make those parking areas, you know, larger if necessary. And I just know a lot of cases when I've stayed at various hospitality venues, whether it's hotels, motels, or cottage type developments, in many cases, you're limited the number of vehicles you can run. It's basically one car, one sticker. Well, I think you've done a very nice job for the pre-application. Thank you. And then we're going to let Mike Morial mm -hmm. cover this piece next. Okay. Uh, yeah, I won't, I won't take a lot of time because it's a pretty cut and dry. But uh, from a legal standpoint, all the development will take place in the R1.5 acre zone district will require a site plan approval and a special use permit approval. Seeker, um, you'll note in the application documents, the short form was used um, as part of the application documents, but Alan and I took a look at it today, and I think the long form is required. I think because of our proximity to the publicly owned um, portion of lands which are in the Catskill Park. I think that does trigger the 25% threshold that's in Seeker. It's the regulation is um, 6 MYCRR part 617.4 B10. And that <coughs> pulls us into a type one action. But as the board would probably figure, most projects that I do as far as uh, representation from a lawyer standpoint, we follow the type one action anyway. It's safer, <laughs> it covers more ground, it gives the board a lot more opportunity to look, to look at and does, protects the board, protects the applicant, and protects the process. So that's what we would do, um, is fill out that part one EAF. I usually put an addendum with it with all the permits, the statutory authority that applies, and then give all that to the board. Um, we would have to do a coordinated review, naturally, you know, with Seeker once we get the application fluffed up. And then the only other thing that I was gonna, that I suggested to Alan today, and then was gonna go over with the board, is that once we get an application that looks good, and we have it in pretty good shape, um, I, was gonna, I was thinking that this project is probably large enough to get a gateway meeting with Dennis Doyle over at the, the county. Let Dennis see it early. So we're not getting a whole bunch of surprises later <laughs> out of the county planning board. And that naturally, Dennis, usually he and Rob Leibowitz will include someone from DEP, 
possibly someone from the health department and likely someone from DOT and then you know a member or two of the planning board if they want to they want to come but that would kind of be the the uh, mode of looking at things initially well tonight is the pre-application correct now we're going to go to the sketch plan your sketch plan is going to come in you're going to be answering a lot of the questions that we discussed this evening right. and then after that we'll discuss sending it to the, the yeah board. circulation for coordinator review and that's everything correct. else that's that's and that's about it from uh zoning and secret standpoint and we do have as the board pointed out we have to look at all the environmental effects mm -hmm. from the phases and then if Roy wants to develop phase one that's fine he comes back for phase two for any changes site plan regulations but that seeker review will be on in the context of the entire project right. okay. now and you're gonna one of the questions that I'm gonna have to ask you next time is that you get numbers from the Pine Hill Water District to make sure that you can support this project. Yeah. Yes, and the as sewer. far as all, all my conversations over the years, I mean, Donnie, Donnie is now retired and is a new guy here. I mean, they're, they're looking for new customers. Good. You know, especially since they fixed all those infiltration leaks, you know, years ago. They, you know, they were, losing, they were losing half the water. Yeah. Ethan Bernstein's the new. Yeah. Donnie. And on the wastewater plant capacity, we're obviously well below, you know, the town's obviously well below the Pine Hill sewer plant's capacity if they have nothing else to pay. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, the system's been, you know, substantially improved. And, you know, one of DEP's goals during the 97, you know, regulation negotiations was, you know, focusing on handling development. And what's nice about this project is public water access, public sewer access, and access off the state highway. Well, the sewer is going to appreciate it. <laughs> you know, Do you they can use that extra. Sure. And there's currently an access road, so like if I'm driving by, I can spot this. Is there any? Uh, I mean, I see the clearing uh, east. That's a house there, and then there's nothing to the west for a little ways there until you get past your western is, is property it, down. Is that right? You know the property that Michelle O'Donnell just updated. Just past it, it, it borders her property there, so you just go past it's her building and it's the right hand turn. Okay. Quick, if you take a look at this, just next to the yeah. right here. Yeah. And yeah. you, you okay. see the road okay. kind of on the bottom right. right. See the multi. And even now with the snow, you can you can, you can see the road going up from from Route One Eight. It does look less steep in the pictures, Alan. Here in February, or that's too soon for where we're at next. That's probably well too soon. Well, it John. depends if you can get all the information together for a, a full sketch plan. By Wednesday, Monday, or Tuesday yeah. of next week's the first. We meet on the ninth, so no. <laughs> and don't when you do submit it, it has to be ten days. Take long that's right. We don't need to rush. Let's do it, let's do it right. You know. Yeah. Agreed. That's one of the conditions, though, 10 days before. Right, right. Thank you. Is there anything else that, like, in terms of presenting this project again? Like, so, for the secretary, <laughs> the secretary standpoint, we don't take minutes at workshops. And you've gone through a lot of information, but it's only in a, a recording. So will you be presenting full again? Yes. Yes. And that's when we'll go through the checklist with you in the long-term form? Yeah. Great. This was just basically Great. Inf I just informational. Informational and it gets your feeling. That's right. And, 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 and yours. And, and we <laughs> you know, want to make sure you understood that we more or less tried to embed it as far as we could as far as highway access, water access, yeah. sewer access, 
This was very good tonight, by the way, for the first meeting. Yeah. Nice job, fellas. We, we, we didn't want to have to say, oh, uh, we'll come back next week to be able to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hear that, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, there's, there's always be a few of them. And you know, we'll likely be enlisting uh, the, our consultants again to help us go through the process of SDR. Ellen Hart left SLR. SLR. Yeah, I was really, really <laughs> sad to see that. Me too. She was terrific. She's the really great. Kind of like yeah, we she have went, Mark still yeah, though. She went in, back into the public sector. Yes, yeah, full time DC. Yeah, she, permitting. She was, she so she said, yeah, she said, happy to see permits from us, but. So we have Mark Caravana now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Rose Baffin Road, I guess. No. I don't, is it right there in St. Catharines? This road that looks up Allen. It does, doesn't it? Huh? That's where I live. Oh, you on St. Catharines? Yeah, I'm right up here. Oh, nice. You can look down at it. What? You can look down at it. It's steep. It's very steep. I was just on St. Catharines the other day and. It's just, you know, it's steep. <laughs> okay. Are you in the modern house? You know what I'm talking about. Your house is? Is it? Really? Really? No. I believe it. Wow. That cost over two and a half million to build. And I know my husband uh, did a lot. You know, the people that used to own it were social friends and helped out. Hey guys, would you mind? Sorry. Thank you. Just, I just, in this site plan checklist has become such an important thing like that you have to go through. And I experience it in the office in terms of, there was like a recent, you know, whatever. It just, all of this stuff by your board, by you, your determination is so important because my office changes a lot, you know? <laughs> 
and you'll de you'll decide on a, you know you'll make a determination about a project, and they don't even finish sometimes for two years later. And this office has changed hands four times, and it's left to like just the permitting process. But it just I have experienced how important this site plan checklist is to be. I know people want to start projects and do things and get short approvals here and this there and they'll figure that out. But when they go to figure it out, there's a lot of times different enforcement in the office. And it's really, it's just so, just the importance comes up to me quite often of how this checklist and these projects, you know, I, I get calls about projects that were approved in 2020, you know, questions and things. I wasn't even here then. Or things that, you know, are finished and they, they they were glossed over for whatever 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 happened. I know county weighs in, county has opinions. I know you all have so much questions you've been asking. It's just it's I'm just blown away by how important the site plan checklist is with these applicants. And if I'm the code enforcer through these projects, I will just constantly remind all of us and you remind me too that if these aren't all answered it cannot be approved. I was just going to say that, Sarah. To take some of the weed off of you. Yeah. When the applicant comes into the office. Yeah, I know. Did you it. simply say the plan board is not going to accept this? Mm -hmm. If there's anything on this site plan checklist that's not answered. Right. That's so that's a, I agree wholeheartedly, unless they demand to come to a workshop. Then you just tell them they, they can come to the workshop, but we're not even going to hear their case. We can't hear their case unless we have paperwork that represents them. But this applicant came to a workshop, and here's my excitement checklist for them. Half, I got to number. I know. You know, which is great. It was. It's what a workshop is for. It is amazing. I think that they did such due diligence, right? Mm -hmm. But I highlighted this needs to be discussed before even a public hearing. This needs to be determined there, way I mean, before their There's a tremendous amount of information we don't have for this project. Yeah. Absolutely. This is gonna be, not even close. Yeah, this is going to be Down a to the problem. sign. Because you know what's going to happen in three years? They're going to come to me for a sign permit. Right. And they, and then we didn't see it. We saw it in some workshop four years ago, but we didn't, we didn't send it to county. We didn't review it ourselves. We didn't okay it. We didn't make sure. And then it comes down to my office, whoever's working in there, giving over a sign permit. But it's in here. It's number 15. Mm -hmm. Design of it, size of it, location of it. Mm -hmm. So I agree, Art. Like sitting down with the applicants and making sure that they understand that, that, that you're not going to see it. But when they come through at a workshop level, like that's why I mentioned, like where, what's next? And you have to present all of that again, so it can be recorded in minutes. And also, we do go through this checklist. You know, eventually, before they're approved or not approved, this checklist we know all these answers, right? The workshop is for exactly what was, which was great to let them know what we need from them mm -hmm. and the things they have to think about. They're obviously not thinking about maintenance people or people no. being there. They're not thinking about these things. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and honestly, if they there is have 56 cabins and have nobody there. Right. Yeah. What is our policy regarding uh, electronic uh, PDS? We talked about it last year, and we as a board agreed that we need to require it. I have to get the town board to put it in their application, but actually I think I did once ask. I thought we did. I thought we and they said just put it in, and I just haven't changed it. Because like, if we come here, to look at all these sheets, we haven't looked at them before. Well, you had a problem with your computer in this particular I, In this situation, my I had like all this technical stuff in my office. I share an office with Rob Stanley now. He did something with the printer, everything. I can't even scan right now. So I called Cliff the other day, and I said this. And then John asked about this meeting yesterday, and I think we should go very hard with PBS. I didn't know that as a board anybody even read my email. And John brought up a good point. It never says, I need you to respond that you've received this. But it, I just, I never really get much feedback if I do send a PDF, which is okay. But so then I was like, when my computer wasn't working, I was like, I don't know that they are seeing it. But if you're, if we're saying it has to be required, I will fix that. And sorry, it wasn't on this one. I think we should. So that we look at it at least a little bit before we mm -hmm. come in here. Yeah. No, 
think you've been sending everything over. Yeah, yeah. This one did. This one did. Except this for one. this one. This yeah. One did. yeah. No, but you. I mean, you, well, I came you reached out to me. I didn't reach out to anybody else. Yeah, and then he called and he said, oh, "We have everything new," and I said, "That board's gonna be pissed at you." That's what yeah. I said. Yeah, she told me like a week ago, Alan. That she, you well, that's not fair. Things, I need so. to just communicate better on that. I'll fix that. I just think though, like, yeah, everything we can answer will make the building department do better when it is somebody else. Can't you have the architect submit the PDF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and force it to all you. Right. Yeah. Because okay. eventually, I have to do it that way to count you in, in any way. Right. Yes, yeah, the, yeah. you're exactly right. It just, this one, it didn't happen. Yeah. I'd just like to say something. We have this as a site plan coming in. But there's things in the ordinance that cross-reference. Okay. Okay. So if you look under subdivisions, yes. Right. It gives you all the details of the roads, the thicknesses. He gave us that, mm -hmm. but it tells you how many feet you need on the side of the road for your utilities. It needs to know what your surface is. Mm -hmm. It needs something came up tonight, and I didn't say anything, but we're still on the camera here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it slipped my mind. It, here's the interesting thing about the subdivision. You know, it came up in a complaint to our office about a neighbor's lighting. The only place we see in our ordinance that reference to lighting is actually in like the subdivision. It's in like planning board material. And for the papers. Yes. But the town ordinance, I can't say. 11622 says you your light's too bright in that person's house. But it is there. You know, it is there in like and, some device. And when that comes in, that's a perfect example. The applicant brings that in to you and you say you're gonna have an eight foot pole light. Mm -hmm. And you say to them, We need to more we need to know more details. We need to know if it's a quartz halogen bulb, yeah. if it's an iodine bulb, yeah. what the lumens are. Because we ran into that uh, down at the Emerson and it was completely unintentional. They were very cooperative through everything. Yeah. But they put the lights in there, and the lights were so bright that the poor applicant mm -hmm. had to go back and change all the bolts that they had caused, caused, yeah. you know, caused because you couldn't drive down 28. Mm -hmm. You were blind. The other thing is, between the Pine Hill sewage treatment plant and the water from Pine Hill water, <coughs> that, those are iffy things. The DEC, with that, with that treatment plant, they don't want to hook up to anybody. They hooked up, hooked up to the MOA, 300 houses, and that was it. Well, so I don't know if they want to come across under the road to service these people. Right. And that, I wanted to ask that when it came to Pine Hill Water. And then, too. But this, in this is on them to sort out, though. Right. Well, let me ask you this. Is it a planning board, does they do, does a planning board need to bring in a town board or an Ethan Bird scene when you're, when an applicant's saying we're using all Pine Hill? No, they need to get that permission themselves yeah. and, and show us that they've obtained that, that permission. Don't we care. don't have to facilitate that. Okay. So is there a precedent for going under Route 28 for water There's supply? No. Hasn't been one, right? Yeah. That, when they put in that sewage treatment plant, they ran it down the, the north side of the Route 28, mm -hmm. and that's as far as they were going. Mm -hmm. They won't go any further. But, but they say that actually that does reach their their access road, right? Yeah, but it's not on their side of the road. But on the, it's on on the other side. side. Oh, they I thought the, I thought. Well, they need to talk to the Well, the water is on the south side and the sewer is on the north side. Right. Yeah, so the water the is going to be the problem. Yeah. Right. They got to get permission. Yeah. <laughs> How do you even do that? They have been very, um, uh, they, they only want to go by their, yeah. From the MOA. I see. Yeah. They don't care how much they don't have enough of sewage going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll make a motion to move. Oh, sorry. Was there anything else? Okay. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> can, you, can you turn the camera up? Not, yeah. not one of those four of us in here. Alice leaving. <laughs>